Lonnie Davis, are you concerned about the blockade, not only on the Palestinians, but also on information? Uh, the New York Times, the BBC, Reuters, CNN have all filed a complaint with the Israeli prime minister not allowing international press into Gaza. Why do you think Israel is not allowing press in? Well, first of all, I, I don't want to duck your latter question, because I'm in favor of greater uh, media going into Gaza, so they can report the facts rather than uh, false reporting. Uh, I'd like to get back to that. But let me start with your use of the word blockade. Uh, that's an inaccurate, or at least a biased word. I don't say that you intended it that way, but it is. There is a, a blockade of tunnels and any other means of access that the Hamas has used to allow the import of these rockets from Iran. This is an Iranian subsidized operation, just like Hezbollah. And yet, 165 trucks of humanitarian medical food aid uh, went into Gaza yesterday from Israel. It is the Egyptians that have blocked access. You must ask the Egyptian government, why are you blocking access? Because they know these tunnels have been used by Hamas not to resupply their people with food and medical aid, but with rockets who are placed among civilians, next to schools, under hospitals, to kill civilians in Israel. So blockade is really, I think, a, a word that needs to be changed. It's a selective blocking of terrorist war instruments that are being supplied primarily by Iran, and the Egyptian government has the ability to open those tunnels, and they see the same danger as does Israel. Well, let me put that on question, issue, just one sec, on the issue of the blockade to Professor Neve Gordon, which, which, um, uh, which predates the Israeli invasion, the total blockade of Gaza that many people have been challenging around the world. Can you explain what that blockade is, Professor Gordon? Well, since Hamas was elected into government in a democratic election, Israel decided basically to economically boycott uh, uh, the Palestinian people, and particularly Hamas and the Hamas takeover of the Gaza Strip, and as basically controlling all the borders and deciding who can enter and who can leave and what can enter and what can leave. And it is actually allowing a certain amount of humanitarian aid, and it's allowing this humanitarian aid, according to Israel's own claims, in order that there won't be a humanitarian catastrophe. So basically, Israel is saying, we'll allow 165 trucks so there won't be a humanitarian catastrophe so we can continue the war against Hamas. So it's a kind of new war ethics, a war ethics that you're fighting against uh, not another military, but uh, uh, militants in an arm wing of an organization that are within the civilian population. And so you're basically attacking the civilian population, and you're saying, we don't want a catastrophe to happen, so we can continue attacking you. There's something very cynical about it and something horrific about it. And so, actually, there has been a blockade on Gaza, and it's been a very severe blockade on Gaza, and even Israel claims that there's been a blockade on Gaza, and, uh, uh, and saying that Israel allows humanitarian assistance to enter so it can continue bombing them is very, very cynical. Let, let, let's agree on a basic yes. fact here. Ms. Goodman, you used the expression absolute blockade a second time after I said the first use of your expression blockade was inaccurate or imbalanced. So I would like to suggest that you at least say partial blockade, because it is not uh, aimed at anything other than preventing munitions and rockets coming in from Iran. That's a fact. And ask the government of Egypt whether they agree. Secondly, if, Professor, if wants professor to let me just to, to let me just car, make one other point. A car. He can't import the car. If let, a Palestinian well, wants to import a cow, he can't import I really, the cow. I really wanted to interrupt you badly, but I appreciate you have a lot to say, and I'd like you to allow me to finish. I am very surprised that you don't start with the fact that we agree on. All Hamas has to do is stop 
sending terrorist rockets aimed at civilians. You've never disagreed with me on that. We agree on that. And make peace with Israel. That's all they have to do, the same way that Mr. Abood and the Fatah have done in the West Bank, which is flourishing. And secondly, most importantly, the occupation ended in 2005. Israel took all of its troops out, faced with a state or a terrorist uh, state or government that says, I'm trying to destroy you and I'm going to send rockets to kill your civilians, is the reason why the economic uh, boycott, as you call it, would occur in any civilized country in the world if Canada or Mexico had a destruction objective of the United States and were launching rockets against Houston or against uh, Boston. If you think the United States or any other country in the world would allow that to happen without at least economic boycott while allowing humanitarian aid, then I would beg to differ with you. Uh, Lonnie Davis, Davis we began with I, you. I, I, I just well, we're going to have to wrap up because we're headed okay. to to uh, Dennis Kucinich. Well, just a quick comment on the media, which I didn't answer. I think that there ought to be more exposure and there should be uh, more openness with the media. I think Israel is moving in that direction. I certainly think that the propaganda, for example, the false report that an Israeli tank shot on a U.N. convoy took 48 hours for the United Nations spokesperson who put that statement out to say, well, I'm not so sure. That was a 48-hour time gap. Everybody still believes it happened because the withdrawal of the statement or the modification of the statement didn't get the front page headlines that the statement did. So we have to be very careful that when we get our media into Gaza, that we get people who are objective reporting the facts as to where are these missiles? Are they under schools? Are they in hospitals? And if so, is that an act that is a violation and a war crime in and of itself? That's why I want the media in Gaza to prove the war crimes being committed by Hamas are where they're placing their rockets. Lonnie Davis, we began with you. We will end with Professor Neve Gordon in Beersheba. I have two comments to make. One related to uh, protest and media. 700 Israelis have been arrested to, since this war began because they protested this war. This has not made it to the international media, and it's an act of intimidation by the state against those who protest the war. Second, regarding what Lanny said, that no country would allow uh, a, a, another country to bomb its uh, citizens, he's, he's right. He forgets one essential fact, and that is the occupation. And Gaza was not, uh, is still under occupation because Israel controls all of its borders, and the West Bank is under occupation, and East Jerusalem is under occupation. And the act, the first, the initial, the primordial act of violence is the occupation. The, the rockets are a reaction to that act of violence. And so we have to keep in mind that within it's not a between a state and another state. It's been a way between an occupier and an occupied. We will leave it there. Uh, Professor Neve Gordon in Beersheba, chair of the Department of Politics and Government, Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. He is author of Israel's Occupation. Uh, Lani Davis, senior advisor and spokesperson for the Israel Project, attorney and former special counsel to President Clinton. Thank you both Thank for you being so with us.